Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. Warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It gives me a great pleasure to stay connected through these online sessions, and these are not just um, something that is helping us to learn about the Word of God, but also apply these principles, apply these. Um, you know, it's it's not techniques, but then the methods, right? The method of worship, the method of getting closer to God, and um, it's nice to learn, right? The systematic way of growing in your spiritual life is always essential for everyone to understand, and that's where Christendom is lagging behind. Is what I could strongly perceive, and I had been. <clears throat> A Christian for several decades now and that too um, I was a born-again Christian for almost like you know 25 plus years and I have seen so many congregations teaching so many doctrines which are <clears throat> excuse me outside the Bible but what they were supposed to speak and what they were supposed to preach from the Bible they really don't tend to put any efforts. I'm not saying all, but majority of the churches today are into these kind of uh, pep talks, motivational speeches, or traditional way of uh, speaking. Half the people in the church would start sleeping, yawning, and um, some people, some churches are in, more into the um, what I say, the cultural activities kind of thing, right? They are kind of super energetic and. Uh, uh, enthusiastic and they get into too much of worship music and um, youngsters are being encouraged they they gag they gather up in many uh, social events and uh, yes they pray and they end up start with prayer and end with prayer but anything that happens in between uh, it's not something that you could connect with the Bible that is where you know God planted uh, this kind of thought and vision in my heart many many years ago this was given birth at least 10 or 15 years ago and I had been praying about it I have been preparing myself in the Lord and I had to grow in spirit and I had to refine my mind and thought process right it's not that I need to ensure that I deserve for this no one deserves to talk about God um, it's all about his grace it's all about his mercy that you and I get this extended opportunity to stay with God. But then even for God to invite us and, you know, extend this ministerial opportunity, you and I need to grow in the word of God. And that's where we have picked up this concept to, to help you understand that this is not just important for you to grow in, um, what I say, the, 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 the word, but the word should become your life. And the life is nothing but you know, your life or lifestyle is nothing but worship. I keep repeating this. Many people, they assume that, you know, worship is nothing but thanksgiving and prayer uh, and praise. Not prayer, praise. Singing songs and hymns, in other words, right? But that uh, really uh, confines to the boundary of, you know, thanking God. It's it's actually praise and, praise and um, you know, thanksgiving. But then worship is nothing but how your life is transformed. Yeah, where there is renewal of mind, where there is transformation of spirit. Those kind of people, right, really they rise up very tall to call themselves as the role models in faith, love and purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 says that. What can make, make us happen, uh, I mean, what can make this happen or what can help us to get to that level of uh, spiritual maturity and spiritual growth? It's nothing but the word of God. Absolutely. So the more you get into the word of God, the more you get light on your sinful deeds. The more you get light on your sinful deeds, the more you make efforts to move out of those dark situations. Right? Many people don't like darkness. Why? Because they're scared. Yeah? Scared of what? Because of their um, human assumptions. They think, you know, the devil will come and they will, you know, the devil will hug them, kiss them and do whatever nonsense and maybe beat them to death and all that, right? So these are all the human mythology or I would say the psychological factors where the mankind and the Christendom have assumed that the demonic spirits work in this kind of scary way. Yes, 
while a large portion of people are focusing on this yes the same large portion of people are being deceived through the back doors by this devil because why he works in mind demon demon position um, or demon possessed people you observe their life you observe their pattern <clears throat> i mean behavioral pattern and their um, you know react reacting patterns and uh, uh, you know uh, their talks and stuff like that you will see that they are not stable in mind yes and that's the first thing which the devil attacks because why the mind is the one which travels through the world which is getting getting exposed to the world when you talk to any person in this world when you go through any circumstances the first thing that you will tend to um, notice is your mind is getting impact and that's what exactly we are dealing with this and this is our lesson 16 and we are dealing uh, in this series by and large we are talking almost every single parameter that constitutes to this spiritual anatomy and especially these four components we are talking and all the associated parameters within this four components yes i hope you have gone through all the previous sessions we are talking about the body mind spirit and soul and body mind spirit works in a harmonized way and their governor could be either holy spirit or evil spirit and accordingly you will be filled with heavenly wisdom or the worldly wisdom or demonic wisdom rather right and when you are going to be filled in heavenly wisdom your soul rejoices your inner man rejoices because why that is his attitude that is his desire that he wants to stay close to god because god created the inner man god created um, men and mankind in, in in his own image and the desire for the soul is to always stay um in in touch with god or 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 stay, be preserved in the nature of god however the way he was created inner man or he or she is created inner women right and that's why the soul rejoices when the spirit does the right things as the spirit is being governed by the holy spirit and naturally what happens the body and mind also joins hand um, uh, and work in a harmonized way they are united unified but i did explain through these sessions like initially it is going to be a tug of war it's going to be a struggle why because this mind and body they were soaked in the worldly pleasures the lust of the world or they were in self deception they were blindfolded they were backslidden and they had no idea about these new doctrines that the spirit is teaching them coaching them it's it's going to be a it struggle in the initial stages but over a period of time right in the course of you progressively moving forward in your spiritual journey you will see that even the mind and body gets coached right because their tutor is spirit and the the spirit's tutor is holy spirit himself and therefore they although get exposed the exposure continues to be the same right they go go through the worldly circumstances they live among the worldly people they will have to go go through the lusts of this world passions of the world but they will be abiding by a new doctrine second timothy 17 resist the devil and he will flee away from me from you the devil many people think oh demonic spirit is going to come to attack me with the stones no he's going to come to attack you on your mind right and how he attacks you you never know yeah that's why he's quite famous being that cunning uh, demon right from the beginning and he has that uh, act of uh, trickery to fool you like how the magicians they fool people it's all about tricks yes and tricking is not the attitude of god tricking is not the acts of, acts of the holy spirit but it's the act of the demonic spirit and the evil spirit yes that's how he tricked you and he fooled you and you had been there for almost 30 years now god redeems you delivers you you are freed from the bondage but what happens your mind and your uh, body that is renewal definitely but there is no transformation they have not yet reached to the saturation point saturation point is the extremity of your um or the ex- extreme degree of your ren- uh, uh, you know state of renewal right when you uh, how, how do i tell this right when you wash your car in plain water versus washing your car with the soap water you will definitely find the difference or you take your car and you wash it with soap water dry it and you polish it that is the extreme form of 
cleanliness right the 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 car glitters and you will know similarly your mind and soul or your mind and body uh, that's the best thing to compare your mind and body since they had been exposed through various circumstances they are mucked up with so many so much of dirt and filth and i had explained in one of the sessions how the eyes photographs all the dirty pictures and movies that you have seen it is all registered in the mind memory therefore what happens is it it sustains there it exists there that hard disk is not replaced the hard disk is not replaced but what happens is you cannot hard replace the hard disk hard disk is your mind your brain right but you can replace your memory how you need to read the word of god you need to be grounded and rooted in the word of god we have explained from the book of colossians you need to be grounded and rooted in christ the more you get into these kind of doctrines and the more you get into the meditations and the more you get an understanding the light upon these areas then what happens is the more clearer you become okay the uh, the past was absolutely a rubbish and non you know absolute nonsense and therefore i end up to be like this and therefore you have chosen this new path right it was not accident it was not an incident but it is by choice you make this preference because why you understood the love of christ on the cross the blood that was shed for to to redeem you to proclaim that new salvation to give you that new life and therefore you need not live in bondage you need not live in that harassment anymore all right warm welcome once again to this series and we are dealing with the spiritual anatomy and spiritual anatomy comprises of four different components body mind spirit and soul and this is like a pre meditation session before we get into the actual session where we are going to discuss about the various natures of heart the forms of heart broken heart fragile heart and many things we are going to discuss but then not before we conclude this series and i allow god to drive us lead us help us and coach us and how much of long it's going to take let it take coming to the point romans chapter 6 verse 16 we will continue our meditations from the word of god do you know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves you are the slaves of the one whom you obey either of sin which leads to death or of obedience which leads to righteousness very very important um, chapter in in almost the entire bible there are few chapters which are very very important right starting from um, genesis 3 where jesus was introduced and then you go to john 8 where jesus rebukes the people matthew 23 24 all of us know 23 is about the revelation of uh, the hypocrisy and 24 is about the end ages and revelation 22 revelation 20 these are all remarkable chapters you need to go through it frequently and understand things likewise in the epistles if you see roman 6 holds a lot of significance there are a lot of truth where um, uh, paul is making lots and lots of new doctrines available for us to be dead to sin and we got to be alive in spirit to god that's the concept he's preaching in the book of romans chapter 6 and that's why this is very important for every one of us to be aware like why this is very important because what can help you to be dead to sin yeah nothing other than from the light that you receive through the word of god and who helps you to receive the light from the word of god it is none other than the holy spirit himself and that's why you need to be associated and you need to be um obedient right obedience is better than sacrifice bible says and why it is important it's important because you are surrendering your body mind and spirit into the hands of um the holy spirit you are surrendering it they, they these three as slaves body means every organs right every organs that are, that that are that that comprises this body right they work in harmony do you know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves you are the slaves of one whom you obey so if you submit yourself to the evil spirit then what happens you are obedient to everything the evil spirit says he says ah you need to have grudge against that brother you will do that you need to be offensive you will be offensive you will be defensive you need to be defensive you will be defensive you need to take revenge and avenge such as such brother and you will do it 
you need to be a murderer secretly murdering somebody and then or you hire somebody and you murder somebody and then you pretend as if nothing has happened you will do it all these are the wiles of the devil all these are the um, what i say the reactions of a person who's going to be governed and ruled and controlled by the evil spirit why because this person made a choice that he will surrender his body mind and spirit yeah as slaves these three nomenclatures these three components become slaves to the evil spirit what happens to the condition of soul the inner man records every event i keep telling you this right the soul records every event is the witness of every event it testifies every event and that's why on the day of judgment god talks to soul why because he is witnessing although he has no role to play these three are very important they play the key role working with either holy spirit or evil spirit when you are bonded laborers to evil spirit the soul records every act of corruption every wiles of the devil that has been demonstrated that have been demonstrated in and through you yes and then he gives an account and what happens judgment is proclaimed on him and he is thrown into the lake of fire and he is going to suffer there forever and ever yeah for doesn't it look to be funny that for someone else's crime the soul is getting punished yeah and that's why the soul rejoices when you behave the other way right when you are obedient to the um spirit of god that is the holy spirit which which doesn't lead you to death but it leads you to the eternal life and that leads you to righteousness that ensures that the um kingdom of heaven heavenly kingdom is accomplished in your life yes and you are not able to um get engaged you are not able to say or approve the sins of the past you were involved in some dreadful sins and whatever people think as sins are these dreadful sins what anger um murder and uh, what um lusting adultery and stuff like that no no there are so many passive sins about which we have spoken in a, it's available in the channel you can have a look right you can please listen and that big list i have always quoted have been quoting these references second timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 9 and galatians 5 uh, 17 to 21 and then mark 7 uh, 20 21 22 uh, this is enough for you this comprises list of at least 45 to 50 um parameters or at least 40 to 45 parameters and all these are passive sins and even if you fail in one of those you can be very clear that you are being governed and managed and monitored and controlled by the demonic spirit why knowingly or unknowingly you have fulfilled what has been told in roman 6:16 that you have been obedient slave because you made a wrong choice and no one was there to guide you govern you help you protect you admonish you and therefore you end up to be a person who is not any more cautious and not any more obedient not any more uh, listening to the voice of the holy spirit that is crying aloud from within yourself from from within you and therefore you you initially you were uh, having this little bit of regret and repentance and then you cry But over a period of time what happens is your conscience becomes numb right you you get used to this the first time he murders any murderer yeah they are quite disappointed upset they cry and they weep and oh i deserve for death and all that the second time they repeat the same thing the degree of repentance almost becomes half the third time it it gets it it, be, it is nullified and then after it is just like another you know another act uh, or another deed that happens in their life another incident in in their life it's as good as like they get up in the morning they brush their teeth and they um, uh, eat, you know have their breakfast and then they get into the business of murdering so brushing the teeth and murdering is all about like an activity for them you understand this will be the condition of a person who is going to be governed and managed and monitored by the evil spirit and this doesn't happen automatically or dramatically but this happens with your full consent that because you made a choice to surrender your life into the hands of the wrong person that's what roman 616 is saying you're all with me and before the previous verse what then shall we sin before we are not under law 
but under grace certainly not about which i have spoken in another series therefore i will not spend time here saving grace it's all connected to himothi chapter 9 chapter 2 verses 9 to 11 yes so what i'm trying to say here is you 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 embrace that act of slavery because you made the wrong choice um then verse 17 says but god we thanked that though you were slaves of sin yet you obeyed from the heart that the form of doctrine to which you were delivered and having been set free from sin you became slaves of um righteousness and verse number 14 just a little above for sin shall not have dominion over you but you are for you are not under law but under grace in a separate session we have discussed about this john chapter 1 verse 17 where we were discussing about concepts like you know for law came through moses and but grace and truth um, came through jesus christ about which we spoke and it is in connection to that when you are honoring this grace when you are honoring the salvation when you are honoring the resurrection power in the name of jesus and the precious blood which purchased you for a price 1 corinthians 6:20 says that right you will crush the head of the satan right into your feet feet and uh, roman 16:20 says that and that will be accomplished only have you understood the saving grace concept Revelation, uh, Titus chapter 2 verses 9 to 11 only when you have understood this will work see i told you every single promise of god in the bible is conditional it's not that it's going to work when you have understood the first half and not the second half because why the conditional statements works in harmony in partnership yeah one person signs the deed and another person signs the deed only then the deed is alive the deed is active the deed is given life or given birth right if the other person refuses to sign in the registrar office before the sub registrar the registrar will cancel that agreement yeah will cancel that deed so what happens the similar way you don't make a choice to abide in the laws and commandments of god and then you don't make a choice the right choice to surrender your body mind and spirit into the hands of your holy spirit the holy spirit's deed the agreement the contract with you partnership with you is cancelled by god the father and therefore what happens a new deed is created and that deed is signed by mr lucifer he creates that deed and he is very happy about that deed because that's exactly he wants um, to happen in every single believer's life that's exactly what he wants to see yeah are you all with me all right let's move on second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 my favorite verse for god gave us this spirit uh, not of fear but of power love and kjv version says sound mind but then the other versions like nav they say that it's self control they're talking about one of the fruits of the spirit self control right so fear equal to power plus love plus self control or or in other words power plus love plus self control all three joining hands yeah on on whereas on the other side there is just one word and its name is fear therefore why i am saying this equation or detailing out this equation is you need to understand that fear cannot be counted lightly you cannot count fear so lightly or you cannot take it for granted on the lighter side fear is terrible and it is not from god but the fear of god is from god but it instills joy it instills calmness it instills satisfaction it instills lots and lots of delight um, um in in what you are doing that is called as fear of god you will have an absolute calm mindset and you will be in sound mind you will know what you are doing you will know what you are dealing with and therefore you are not even worried or terrified even an inch or even one percentage and that's why we call it as fear of god is the beginning of wisdom you all know it right some 110 verse 11 fear of god is beginning of wisdom why because that is heavenly wisdom and heavenly wisdom never allows the devil to play any role because why the contract is cancelled the moment you have surrendered your body your mind your spirit into the hands of the holy spirit the contract is with the hand in the hands of god and therefore you're filled with heavenly wisdom and the fear of god is filled on your in your heart and in your 
in in everything that you do you will watch out and you will be diligent you will not do things in a in a, in a in a careless way or in a casual way because why because you know that my father is watching me you know that i have this partnership with my father you know that how much it cost for jesus and how much he had suffered on the cross every single thing will rewind in every incident in every moment every decision that you take and everything that you do everything word that idle word that you speak not idle word every word that you speak idle word has a different meaning right and you also will be mindful of this matthew 1236 that you have to give an account in the day of judgment for every deed that proceeds from your life and every word that proceeds from your mouth and there it's written as idle word idle word the actual translation is useless word which means what you will never waste even a single microsecond in your life why because you have to give an account for wasting that time neither will you open your mouth and speak some rubbish or get into gossips complaints grumbling murmuring sledging people and yeah fighting and quarreling and you will be a peace lover or you will be a peacemaker yes because why our god then his name is prince of peace as your 96 says he is a prince of peace mighty counselor you will end up counseling people you will lead them towards the light and you will lead them towards god and you will be a peacemaker the person would be coming to fight and stone you to death but the way how we look i mean the way how you looked at him the way how you treated him the way how you respect him you are known for who you are and the person reads the quality of your spiritual health and he sees how you replicate the love of god and he understands what a great role model you are for love faith and purity 1 timothy 4:12 is fulfilled in your life most importantly that person who so called enemy who came to fight with you have understood that you are a person with sound mind yes filled with lot of sound mind in the sense full of heavenly wisdom and in other words you are a person who fears god therefore you will do everything that is right in the sight of god and can there be errors with god there can never be errors with god right we we definitely know this i hope you clearly understand the concept of sound mind right the sound mind is all about how clearer you are in terms of understanding the power that been that's been given to you in the name of jesus right and how careful you are to observe the laws and commandments why because you slip off in that the accuser is going to be at work against god saying that he belongs to me why i should listen to you god is in control over the evil spirits right and the evil spirits will go and fight with god romans sorry revelation um 12:10 we take and read right he is the accuser of the brethren day and night but when he when when the accuser is at work he will be monitoring you he'll be watching you as much as god watches you the evil spirit the demons that are that are at work and who are who are the targets for the demons tell me people who want to abide in laws and commandments of god people who have surrendered their lives i mean to say their body mind and spirit into the hands of holy spirit they welcome holy spirit to govern people who hate sin people who don't want to sin people who want to be freed from sin people who want to be you know redeemed out of their bondage and slavery they are desperate and they become their targets in other words simple words born again christians not all christians they think they are christians but they are serving their master mr devil right they have they are bonded laborers and they have been enslaved uh, in in the, in the in the deeds of the evil spirit long ago but they assume and about which we discussed right they are living a kind of a, what is the life in blindfold they are the blindfold in nature yeah such people they are not the targets because they are already on his side the devil side but who become who gets um, uh, what to say who who becomes an adversary to the devil or who is who could possibly become the real target uh, of of the devil it's people who repent who doesn't want who hate that uh, past sins and they don't want to fall into the trap again they want to live in the renewal of mind and they love the transformation of spirit such people becomes uh, the target to the devil and he goes to god and he accuses saying that look he was right in nine things but he slipped off 
with that law, with that law, with this commandment. And then what happens? God allows the tempter. Okay, fine. And while the tempter is allowed, Holy Spirit is going to groan and weep and pray for you. That you should get that renewal of mind again and you should be perfect. And the one thing that you slipped off, for example, you are a person who are, what is it, uh, bound to two sinful deeds. Number one is lying and number two is um, lust, right? Especially sexual lust or sexual immorality. Now you overcome sexual immorality. And for some reasons, you think lying is not a worse sin, right? Lying is not as sinful as sexual immorality. Therefore, I continue to lie, brother. That's why I told you there is a big list on passive sins. <laughs> and that's why you need to be grounded and rooted in the word of God. What you count lightly are the ones which the accuser picks up and he goes and argues with God, saying, look at the state of this person. Look at this guy. Look at this lady. They are born again and see how they are into these these many passive sins. You, you may be, uh, what to say, a bonded slave uh, to at least 20 to 25 passive sins. And I gave you the list and reference a few minutes ago. What happens? One murder is bigger or 25 passive sins are bigger. 25 passive sins are bigger and according to God, every sin is a sin. There is no big sin and small sin. There is no lighter sin and heavy uh, heavily bonded sin nothing like that sin is a sin because his eyes are eyes of purity that's the way how jesus lived his life although he was walking as carnal being in this human form like you and me but he never count anything as you know as li as li uh, okay th this is fine speaking lies is no big deal but i shouldn't be murdering brother i have never shed anyone's blood, anybody's blood i never hurt anybody or threw stones at somebody if you have this attitude, you are that Old Testament guy because the New Testament guy's mind will be renewed, transformation of spirit. And most importantly, 2 Timothy 1.7 says that you will be a person who is born again and your mind will function much, much, much differently than the normal, uh, you know, heathen's mind. Yes, and that's why the spirit of fear I gave you the equation, fear on left side and on, 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 on the right hand side, power, love and self-control slash sound mind works together to defeat this simple element which mankind thinks. Simple element. Fear, no, we can overcome. Worry, I do not worry like that. No, no, no. Fear is terrible. It is even dangerous as some of the dreadful diseases like cancer and AIDS. Can you believe? You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the love of the Father instilled in you and you need a sound mind to defeat fear right the verse is written in different tense Go, this is like a command you do not be fearful in your heart because fear is instilled by the devil because he reminds either about the sins of the past or he terrifies you um, about the future is this money enough to educate your daughter is this money enough to get your son married is this money enough to repay your debt? So many doubtful uh, thoughts will be instilled by this devil. And that's why I say the one thing that devil attacks is mind. Mind, which is the key for the demonic forces to open the door and make an entry into your life. And that's why Bible talks in Romans 12, 1 and 2 about the renewal of mind. Renewal of mind, how, how does it happen? You need to be grounded and rooted in the word of God. And when you're grounded and rooted in the word of God, you're filled with self-control, the power, right? The love that you have for the mankind because the love of the father is in you. You will have such a great power to resist the devil because the resurrection power of Jesus is instilled in you. Yeah. And you will be of sound mind. In other words, you will be a man or a woman of self-control. You will not get into quarrels, fightings, rage, sledging, slendering. Nothing of that sort shall sustain in your mind. Then where is the room for the next level of sins, dreadful sins of murder and adultery and all that? When you take care of the paths of sins, the next degree of sin is nullified. But when these paths of sins multiply, that's when, see, what happens is, what happened was Cain had that envy with his Brother, envy became rage and rage became murder. Murder became bloodshed and bloodshed became a dreadful sin. Yes. 
and he was entitled as the first murderer imagine the situation of cain obviously he's going to be in the place of torment imagine his position right what i need yet i was i could have listened to god god gave him a chance he said that if you have done well i would have honored you and why are you why are you so angry at your brother take and read genesis chapter 4 and he also gave him an indication hey worst thing is going to take place you're going to murder almost he said that indirectly but he did not listen and today it's too late for him to repent why because it is too late for him to realize and the more you realize the more you become the children of light and children of light is nothing but the person who walks in power love and sound mind and where is the room for fear of the devil tell me how by, by what tense is going to come and tell you hey this is not going to happen you will say get lost why because you are in sound mind and uh, there is another verse right a beautiful verse um, james chapter 4 uh, verse 8 no james chapter 1 verse 22 we'll read first and then we'll come back in connection to what i'm reading now why you think fear takes place yeah why you th- th- why you think fear uh, takes its root takes its shape in the mind of a human being in the mind of you know christians especially because they don't fall by this commandment be the doers of the word and not the hearers only deceiving yourselves yeah you're only listening but you're not practicing you're not applying the application of the laws and commandments that you'll have learned in the past doesn't you know um uh, that doesn't uh, doesn't seem to travel all the way to your mind and uh, mind and spirit right draw near to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts i got reminded about another verse because these two verses we have already discussed hebrews 10:23 a beautiful verse is there i will read let us hold fast hold fast on what it's like tightening the seal belt seat belts it's like tightening your helmet why because you want to protect your head to preserve your head from any injury because head is very very sensitive all sensory organs are located on your head that's why helmet is important you bre- you break your knee you break your knuck- uh, ankle knuckle that that those things can be fixed those are fractures simple fractures compound fractures we all know this right but if there is a fracture in your brain brain finished <laughs> right that's why the traffic police gives us an instruction they also slap you with a fine saying that you are not wearing because they care for you because they have fined you are you going to rage against them no they fined you because they are concerned about you that you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't be getting into some sort of condemnation or punishments because of your unawareness because you were sluggish because you were not mindful because you were ignorant because you were resisting resisting the truth you need to resist the devil instead instead some christians are resisting the truth in the word of god resisting the laws and commandments no it's not possible flesh is weak not flesh is weak you are attracted towards the passions of the world sexual pleasures of the world therefore don't use the name of god to justify your deed to justify your actions are we all connected right so hold fast 23 let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering yeah for he who promised is faithful wavering also denotes that you are so doubtful in your mindset you're not stable in your mindset james 16 you take and read you're not a stable man in your mindset and that's why only your lips they are confessing the promises of god great receive within me than that is in this world but the heart doesn't believe <laughs> why because the situation is against you and there is hopelessness you don't believe why because you're not grounded and rooted in the word of god you have not experienced the power of god you have not experienced the love of god and you are not a person who is loving you don't give love to others why because there is no love of god rooted in your body and mindset and you are not a man who's of sound mind because of this reason because you are always doubtful you are in wavery mindset you don't position your hope upon the confessions 
which are based on the promises of God and the promises of God are yes and amen which means there is nothing in between yes and amen yes and amen are both the same you know that right you say yes and amen may it be done there is nothing in between the, these two right there is there is nothing called as knows or may, may might might happen or it might take place yes second corinthians 120 you take and read all the promises of god are yes and amen and it shall not return back to you void before accomplishing its purpose and the very meaning that this promise was written yes no weapons formed against you shall prosper when you when you speak it in that sense i say 5417 and every tongue that rises against me i will uh, i will, i shall condemn them bible says which means what no one can come and rage war with you through unmeaningful words and you know rage words of rage and stuff like that are you binding all of these maybe you're binding it at the level of your mind but your heart is not believing in the sense your spirit is not believing then who are you you are that person with wavering mindset doubtful mindset and therefore who are you you will be filled with full of fear that's exactly what is written in second timothy 17 i'm justifying the first half of second timothy 17 first half you're filled with the spirit of fear you're 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 grounded and rooted in fear why because of all these reasons wavery mindset doubtfulness no obedience no belief you don't respect the word of god you think it is just an ink printed on paper whereas bible says that it's the word that has been written by the fingertips of god in your heart 1 corinthians chapter 3 you take and read you will understand and pray god from ezekiel 36 26 that take out this uh, heart of uh, stone and please put in this heart of flesh which means this heart which is heart means spirit right and uh, yeah that that also contributes to your soul extended to your soul um yeah that spirit which is so hard filled with wavery mindset and foolishness and blindfold attitude and yeah all these things not ready to accept how much to some people how much ever you go and explain how much ever you try to convince they will say uh 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 they will be listening 10th minute when you are done they will go and do what they want to do right i have seen many many people i would end up talking to them counseling them for almost a hour or two or even more than that for several times i will have to talk to them and convince them but they finally would be doing what they want to do why why is this pattern uh, existing in a in a in a in a human anatomy tell me or spiritual anatomy because their belief system is completely nullified they don't believe in anything but they believe in the lie of the devil and that's why some people elevate the fear right about the fear of the future fear of the present age fear of the past yeah god would have beautifully delivered you from a problem or a trouble maker but then you will be consistently watching when next is going to trouble me and you know what happens he will definitely trouble you why because what you believe is what will happen when you pray believing that you will then you will receive it for sure matthew 21 and 22 says this but when you pray and you do not believe it the new doctrine is you will still receive the result and the result is from the devil not from the father yes even for your belief system there is definitely a, there is a definite result but even for your disbelief the system of disbelief your attitude of disbelief it's also called as disobedience there is a definite result and the result is from the devil and that's called as fear that's called as worry that's called as instability that's called as unstable mindset that's called as um doubtfulness yes that's called as wavery mindset that's called as mood swings you will see all worked up in the church moment they are out of the church this is all useless brother this will be their next confession they will nothing can convince them even god were to appear they will still question are you really god i don't think so they will touch god they will feel god they will kiss god but after god is gone i think that is devil this is how they are they they are they have the psychological impact and you take them to the counseling sessions you take them to psychiatrists you treat them with medication they will never be all right it could be you my brother my sister who you are listening to me right it could be you it could be me and you may not even know that you have 
such an infliction living inside you, reigning inside you for such a long time. And what helps you to get that out? The laws and commandments, when it travels, the word of God, when it travels, the instructions of God, when it travels, the corrections of God, when it travels, the reproofs of God, when it travels in and through you, it cuts your heart, it cuts your mind, it makes you bleed, it, it makes you feel bad, but then it exposes the truth. And then you will sob and you will weep, oh, I was such a fool, I waste my 30 years. That's fine, brother, past is past. You have some life left in, 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 in you, right? At least live the life for the next few years in truth, in broken spirit, in contrite spirit, in honesty, in belief, in obedience. And then you become a vessel, an instrument for the second half of Second Timothy 1.7. What is that? You will be the mind. You will be the man filled with, full of the resurrection power, the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you will be filled with love. Your words will be seasoned with grace, Bible says in Colossians 4, 6. And you will never be bothered to forgive anybody. Anyone can call you with any name they want. You will never get worked out. Yes, you, sorry, you will, get, you will never get worked up. You will all be fine. You will be a person who will who is going to be full of this calm mindset. Proverbs 17, 27, my favorite verse. You take and read offline. You will become an instrument, a vessel of these words of God. Right? And nothing can make your mood swing like a seesaw. No way. Why? Because you have a lot of self-control and sound mind. And sound mind is given to you. Nothing except by the word of God. Are you all with me? All right. We will we will uh, reference one more word. And that is our favorite word only. Because we have gone through it multiple times. Uh, my time is already up almost. So I will just do that. And I will. And we, we will call it a discussion. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says this. Do not be conformed to this world. Conformed means don't be so attached to the world. It doesn't mean so many people twist this verse and misinterpret it, saying that, oh, I need not be attached to this world. Therefore, I need not buy anything. Let me have one bicycle and two rubber slip slippers or something like that, or, a, or one cloth and I will wash it and I will wear it every day. That's not what it is. Please earn well. Please be blessed materialistic. Um, on, sorry, not not material. Please be blessed in your material needs, and please be blessed overflowing and above. That's when you can give to others, right? That's when you can bless others. If you don't have sufficient for you and your own family, you won't be a blessing to others. And what kind of life is this? You get up, you earn, you live, you eat your own food, and then you need to be blessing to others. You need to lead others. You need to bless those that are your brothers and sisters that are poor, downtrodden, needy. Who will give if you don't give? They're children of God. And how is that you look at them starving and you go home and you eat your food and then you sleep peacefully? No. Many days my heart breaks. If I go through such incidents, unless and until I do something to them, I won't be fine. That What kind of spirit is that? That's the spirit which has been governed by the Holy Spirit. Why? You are filled with love. Second Timothy 1.7 but the person who is confirmed to the world, oh, I myself and me, my family, my riches, my wealth, my property, my job, my money, my bank balance, my, my shoes, my, my everything, it will be I myself and me. We travel together, we kiss each other, we love each other and we go to hell each other, you know, together. You love this formula, is it? I myself and me, we love each other and we go to hell together. Doesn't mean that you need to hate each other. Yeah, you can love. But as much as you love yourself, you love your neighbors. That's the second commandment of Jesus. Yes? Book of John, you're all reading that, right? I think in John 14, I think. Yes? Love, as much as you love yourself, you need to love your neighbor. That doesn't mean that you could put your own family to starvation and you can take your property, sell it and give it to others. There are many idiots, spiritual idiots who, do, who does that. No, Bible doesn't demand that way. But you could definitely pray. You could save a little portion of what uh, you have, right? Or you can reduce that little portion of food, little, little portion of your expense and you can save that little money and you give it to the poor. God will bless you more. Why? Because he saw that attitude, giving attitude. 
God loves a cheerful giver. The more you give, he will increase. The more you give, he will increase. The more you give, he will increase. But they claim this verse, oh, God is the one who will increase and he adds no sorrow to it. He is the Lord who will teach me to profit. You know, to whom these verses are applicable, those that are cheerful givers, only to those these verses are applicable. I told you many times, I'm telling this again, every single promise of God is conditional. Because why? Our God loves to work in partnership. You do something and he does the rest. Or sometimes he does something and then he is expecting you to do the rest. You understand? It's working in partnership. Sometimes he begins and you end it. Sometimes you begin and he ends it. Every, every promise of God is conditional. And that's why it's very important that you don't be conformed to the world because the more you are attached to this world, materialist, materi materialistic mindset or material deeds, always about car, bungalows, property, uh, bank balance, job, promotion, hike, bonus you'll see it's all about why because they want to buy something they want to travel somewhere they want to go by flight they want to have a world trip yes i'm, I'm not saying this is wrong but then you get too much attached your heart mind body and soul works towards accomplishing the materialistic needs then you are the person who's conformed to the world and bible gives you a commandment do not be do not be the more you are confined to this world the more you are away from the second half of second timothy 1 7 that is you're not the man of love and power and sound mind you are not in self-control and the second half of romans 12 2 we will read this and we'll conclude but be transformed by the renewal of your mind in other words rather the actual translation is here it is talking about the transformation of spirit which leads to the renewal of mind about which we have explained enough i'm not going to repeat it yeah that you may prove what is that good what is this proving proving means what you walk around not just a person who's who's just a hearer hearers don't do anything they they simply talk they simply talk christ they don't live as christ lived right you have seen this talking types only empty words no action nothing i, I will check out brother i will definitely try to help nothing they will do i will arrange some money they will never come back but a person who is, they are not even sympathizing category, right? But a person who is in the empathizing category, he will not speak a word. Straight away, he will take his hands, put it into his pocket, pull up that money. He will, he will just say, brother, take this. He won't even count how much money he lifted out of his pocket. Have you seen some people? Love them. I just love them and God loves them. And, and he will simply force them to take that money. Take it. Take it. Just keep it with you. No, I won't be able to return it. Who is asking you to return? Keep it. May God bless you more. And he will pray such a prayer. And God will multiply that simple blessing that he had given that brother. Because why? His heart was pure. Yeah? His heart was full of love. And God multiplies that love. I have seen that. Many people, you know, some people I have given uh, money and I have helped them. And not always money is the one uh, used as an instrument to help even motivating words words of blessings words of encouragement or helping them to get a job and in that job i have seen how they prospered and excelled all these things are you know deeds of love deeds of empathizing with with your neighbor need not be a christian believer and most of the people whom i have helped knowingly or unknowingly they happen to be non christians and what do they see in me they see the reflection that is called as love of Christ. They see Christ in me. But I would not speak a word. I would not make a prayer to them. In the name of Jesus. May God convert you. May God convict you. May your soul be preserved from not going to hell. The guy will return the money. You take your money and you get lost. Are you trying to convert me to your religion? No, that's not the way. Just give them money and pray for them in your heart. If he's a Christian believer, then pray openly. Say that I want to have a word of prayer. Then ask God to lead them and close the prayer in less than 30 seconds. That's it. And God, you'll, you'll see how the brother's life changes. You understand? Huh? You want to be light to the world? This is how you can be light to the world. This is how you can be a blessing to others. And I'm reading that again. That you may prove what is that good. That's what exactly I'm explaining so far. How do you prove? 
that Christ is in you, not with empty language, empty words, empty hand or empty pockets. <laughs> what to do, brother? My pocket itself is empty, which means what? You are not grounded and rooted in God. You are not a man of love and sound and sound mind and power. You don't deserve to call yourself as a Christian. Then why the hell you are going to someone else's place and saying that, let me pray for you, brother. Don't do that. You pray for yourself. Place your empty hands on your empty head and ask God, you got to fill your hands and head with full of knowledge, power and sound mind. This is the state of Christians. Yeah, when everything is empty in you, why are you going there as an empty person? They don't see Christ in you. They see devil in you. Yeah, they see the demonic spirits in you. And how do they look at Christ afterwards? Tell me. How do they look at Christians? Because of one few brothers and sisters who are of this nature that they don't have anything to prove that Christ is in them because they have no reflection of God's love or Holy Spirit's companionship or the fruit of the Spirit or nothing in them. No reflection. No one could see that word of God in them. They go and stand there as an empty brother. How how would they look at even some brothers and sisters that they uh, that are grounded and rooted in the word of God? They look at them in the same way. That's why Christendom and Christianity has lost its value and worth before uh, heathens and before non-Christians because of these few people. Are you all with me? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you before you help somebody, before you go somewhere, before you do something, before you talk something, yes, before you listen to something, before you watch something, you need to ask this question: Is this acceptable, and is this the perfect will of God? I repeat it for you: Is this acceptable in the sight of God? Is this the perfect will of God? Every single thing that you do, every moment in your life, you need not do it in panic. You need not do it in uh, doubt you do, need not do it in fear but you do it with love right love love in home love in god and what happens it becomes your habitual practice everything you do will be perfect in the sight of god why because you are checking it out only if it is perfect you will do your habitual practice will change your mind will be tuned and coached your spirit will be transformed and it will be only listening to the voice of the holy spirit and holy spirit will definitely lead you in the right direction and the acceptable and the perfect will of god is when is, is where he's going to lead you you can trust him yes are you all with me let's bow down and eyes closed heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity and this fellowship lord we appreciate helping us to understand every single word of god and thank you for this uh, words of meditation and explanations and this doctrines being preached preached in a very simplistic way thank you for always leading us by your side and help us to walk in light in jesus name we pray amen god bless you stay tuned i will soon come and meet you with the lesson number 17 we are not yet done please don't go anywhere but subscribe to our channel and listen to other playlists similar to this and but with different concepts and doctrines we have done a lot and lot of analysis and researches they are available and share it with your friends and relatives be an instrument to spread the word of god god bless you